Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Python sorting tutorial. In this one we're going to be covering the shell sort tutorial, which is kind of an extension from the insertion sort uh, algorithm because it uses insert insertion sort. <laughs> Sorry, it's a tongue twister. Um, but it kind of makes the job easier for the insertion sort rather than just doing it on the whole list. It kind of sorts some of it beforehand, so then it has an easier job later just doing the finishing touches. And this will make more sense to you when you see it in action, if you don't already know what it is. I will obviously link to the Wikipedia page, you can kind of see a visual representation there, which doesn't help much. Uh, it will it'll make more sense to you once you've seen how it actually works. Uh, this other website here, I'll link to it, shows you uh, a more visual like description of how it works. So it says like, we take the length of our list, which is 9, we do integer division to get halfway, because obviously halfway would be um, 4.5. Um, wait, is this 9 long? Yeah, so it's going to do integer division uh, of 2, which will bring it down to 4.5, which will actually go down to 4. Um, so obviously 1, 2, 3, 4. Wait, 0, 1, 2, 3, which is 4 length. And so um, I'm a bit tired, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm going to stay awake for this. Um, but anyway, we get it into uh, three sublists with gap sizes of 3, actually, because 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. The gaps between them are 3 long, because uh, obviously if you add 3 to this, 0, well sorry, 1, 2, 3, we get to here. Um, what that actually means is that we take the whole list and we get sublists, and then we sort the sublists. So our first sublist is actually just 54, 17, 44. The next one is 26, 77, 55. And the third sublist is 93, 31, 20. So then we insertion sort the mini lists, the sub lists. So we just basically sort these. So that's 17, 44, 54, that's in order. 26, 55, 77, that's in order. 20, 31, and I3, that's in order. And then we shove them all back in in their right locations. And the final list is close to sorted. It's a lot more like closer than the original list. It's not quite finished yet. So what you do is you then run an insertion sort on your final list, which if you ran insertion sort right away, it would take forever compared, com not, not forever, but it would take forever compared to this. Um, because this now only has to move four things around. It says, well, we move uh, 20 and 26, and we move uh, 31 down twice, and then we move 54 down once, like this. And there's our sorted list. So that's showing you fully how it works. Um, obviously, like, if you have an awkward amount of numbers, then uh, you actually get, like, but because we use integer division, because you can't get decimals, you might get awkward size lists, but that doesn't mean the algorithm doesn't work, it, it still does. Anyway, I'll link to this too, but let's get into it. So, 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 let's just quickly get our list of numbers, because I'm not going to sit here typing out random numbers. And we're going to make a function for uh, shell sort, which takes in numbers. And we're going to uh, need another function for doing the insertion sort, so um, sublist sub list insertion sort and we're going to take in numbers and two others um, which I will yeah I'll get you to figure those out um, and then we'll say shell sort numbers print numbers just like the normal uh, layout yeah let's not put that there I'll just put da -da -da. Da -da -da. Obviously, you're going to figure out what those are. So basically, this first function, what you need to make it do is you need to make it figure out how many sublists there are going to be, and then we want to run this for the amount of sublists there are, passing in the array, and then you'll figure out what these two things are. Um, and it's basically just meant to loop for each sublist doing its sorting, so that you end up with three sublists and the sublists. Well, for this case, it's free. You end up with free sublists, and those sublists are sorted in themselves. And then once it's finished, uh, they get put back together. Now, for the sake of this, we don't actually make three separate lists. We just treat it as if there was three separate lists. And I'll explain what that means in a second. Um, and then once we've finished doing that sorting, we then run one final sort on the final list, which then gives us a fully sorted list. And you can have a go at this if you want, it's a bit more complex than normal. Use the web page if you want to try and like uh, get some help on how you would go about doing things, but if you want to watch me uh, teach it, then let's go. So in the first function, we want to work out 
like the amount of lists. So we're going to say um, sublist count, the amount of sublists is the length of the array divided by two. But because it's um, a list you're dividing, you always should use and have to use in this case integer division, which basically is two, it's two division signs, two slashes, div, and it basically means that it returns an integer, even if it's a decimal, it's going to return an integer. Um, you have to do it this way, otherwise it's going to throw our messages. And then we need to say, well, it's greater than zero, because obviously if it, we're going to be uh, halving, and then if it gets less than zero, then you yeah, can't do it. So, well, it's greater than zero. We want to loop, so for iron range, I could do, z um, I could do zero comma sublist count, but sublist count is also enough information for it. It basically means we'll loop that many times. And by default, it starts indexing at zero. I hope, I'm pretty sure it's zero. I, it, there's kind of like a thing in the community where everyone takes the mic out of the people who start index at one. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure Python just by default starts at zero anyway, but it's always nice sometimes to declare that you're starting at zero, but you don't have to. Anyway. Um, what do we want to do in here? We want to run the function, what have I called it, sublist uh, insertion sort. We want to pass in three parameters. So we're going to pass in the array. And the two other things it needs to know, it needs to know i, which is this loop i. So it's basically which um, list are we currently in? Because there's going to be a certain amount of lists. So there's going to be three lists. So is i going to be zero, one, or two? And then we also need to pass in sublist count uh, to know how many sublists there are. Basically, this is the size of the gaps. You know how like there's a gap between each thing? Like So we have like the first value, miss three or two or whatever, and then the next value. This is the gap size. Um, and now we can go into here and we can write these. So obviously, like, as I said, we are going to have like a start. Um, and then we're going to have a gap size. So let's call it gap size. And now inside here, we can write it. So first thing, we need to do a loop, because loops are very very common in programming and especially in algorithms um, we need to know for each one where it starts so we'll take in the uh, start which is the array how, where we're currently at so whether we're at 0 1 or 2 and then we need to add the gap so for example if we're in the second list and our number is at position um, 4 so like index 3 actually um, it'll take in on here 1 plus the gap size which is 3 so we'll actually be at index 4 for that one sorry on the second one it's index 3 for the first index 4 for the second and index 5 for the last um, hopefully this all makes sense to you it's quite a bit more complicated if you read up on the thing you should understand what I'm saying and then we need to uh, so that's the start then we need to do it to the length of the list because obviously we'd, like we do it that many that's the maximum and we need to go up in an increment basically in the l 4 loops if you put in a first in first uh, parameter is the start, second is the end, and if you put in a third, it tells it the increment. By default, it's plus one, but if you put in two, three, four, five, it means it'll go up in two, three, four, or five. Last video, I did a decrement, so minus one, so it went down. But in this, we're going to be going up in gap size. So depending on how big our gap size is, that's how much it's going to increment. So in this case, if gap size is three, it'll start at maybe zero and then go up zero. 3, 6, 9, whatever. That's basically what that means. It's going to go up in the gap size, which is what we want because we want to only check the ones every 3 or every 4 or however big the gap size is. And then now we need to store some values. So we need uh, the current like value is numbers i. So that's the current one we're checking. And then index is i. And the reason we're storing index rather than just using i is because we're going to change index. Um, so I'm going to say while index is greater than or equal to gap because if the index uh, is less than the gap then we are already finished um, like we've already gone far enough we can't go anymore so we want to stop then and we also want to make sure that numbers index minus gap uh, gap size is greater than the current value uh, what that basically means is if we're doing an insertion sort and you're checking values, normally you would check minus one, so that you check the value before it. But we're doing gap size because the value before it is actually the one in that that many before it. Normally it's always the one before it, so you do minus one. But this in this case will be the three before it, and gap size is going to be three. So that's basically means it's dynamic to how big the gap size is. 
Um, so it's saying like, while the uh, number that's before it is bigger than the one that we're currently on, we want to swap them because obviously you want the bigger numbers at the end. So we're going to say numbers index equals numbers index minus gap. Um, and then we want to do index equals index minus gap. So basically, um, that means that the index is current is we're setting index actually equal to the index of the one before it, and we're setting the um, number equal to the one before it. So that now we are we've moved the big number, sorry, we've set the small number down, but now we need to move the big number up. So we'll say uh, numbers position. I call it index. Yeah, numbers index is equal to the current value. So this this whole function should be very similar, almost identical to the insertion sort video, with the only difference being we're using gap size and uh, increment of that, and that's the only slight difference. Uh, and now, after keep in mind when we've run this, it's gonna go back here. So like we're gonna say so forever however many things there are we're gonna run this, this, and then what do we want to do? Well, one thing we can do which they do in the example is we they print which is you know quite helpful. So they're gonna print um, this lets us know for each one obviously like how um, what the size of the current one we're doing is whether it's a we're going to keep halving so it's going to go down to four down to two down to one and then it's obviously going to tell us the current list which will as we get closer to the end it will keep getting closer to the final thing um and then actually every time we've done this we also want to take sublist count and we're going to uh, halve it but obviously we're not just we're not just going to divide by two we're going to integer divide by two and then since this isn't a while loop it's going to keep doing this until we get to zero and then it's going to stop and when it's got to zero, it'll be sorted. So, oh, gap size, sorry. Let me just stop this. Let's have a look. So the first time we do it, it halves it to four, which it should be 4.5, but because it's into division, it gives us four. After increments of four, the list is this. 20, 26, 44, 17. It's getting sorted, but it's not sorted yet. And then it gets more sorted and more sorted. And as you see at the end, we now have 17, gap, gap, 31, gap, gap, 55. That's sorted. 20, gap, gap, 44, gap, gap, 77. Sorted. 26, 54, 93. Sorted. And then now at the end, it just does one last one. 17, 20, 26, 31, 44, 54, 55, 77, 93. And that is a lot more efficient than if we ran the insertion sort on this list. Well, maybe not on this list because it's a very small list, but if we had a big list, like a big list, this would be so much faster. Because um, it would basically just do a little sort and then do one big final like swoop just to finish off the values that are slightly out of place. But in general, it puts things a lot closer into place. Um, but yeah, that's this. Uh, I'm going to try and fit it all on screen so you can see that. Let me just uh, like push this up push this up. I don't like having this. We'll, we'll just do this. I'll zoom out one. There we go. Um, so anyway, I hope you like watching this uh, video. Um, this is a lot more complicated. It might have been harder to follow. Um, I'm sorry if it was. But yeah, um, what else have I got to say at the end? Well, I'm going to do one more video on sorting algorithms, then I'll mention about big O notation, then I'll move on to doing more like just Python tasks in general, which are more interesting, but uh, these are also very good to know um, just for the sake of any programming thing. Like you can use these in other languages, you've got to translate them a little bit, but uh, most of it is the same. Then, yeah, what else should I mention? Well, first of all, is starting tomorrow, I'm going to be recording videos. Uh, for my a new Unity series where I'm going to be taking a game and reviewing it and analysing it and then trying to create certain mechanics from it. Uh, I don't know how long these series will last or how often I'll make a new one on a new game, but I have a game in mind and I'm not going to mention it just yet. Uh, you'll see in tomorrow's video. I will do s Tomorrow's video might just be a gameplay, like um, commentary review of the game, but then f from that onwards, from then onwards, it will be... Uh, analyzing and 
then making parts of the game. So I think like that's going to be a fun series. Um, as well as keeping up with shader videos, I'm still currently in the process of learning uh, the new features in shader graph, which are still a bit buggy and just in general shader graph on the beta version is quite slow. It just feels doesn't feel right. Uh, but I'm still just you know learning it as well. Um, I'm sure all the features aren't still here anyway, so that's something to wait for. But anyway. Um, if you want to join our Discord server, that's in the description, obviously, and then subscribing and liking would help me a lot. This is the same thing I say every time. Uh, commenting as well, what people want to see. Obviously, give me video ideas. I've got a uh, notepad file of like video ideas, which I can always rely on when I've run out of ideas, because there's a backlog of them there, which is always nice um, to have plenty of ideas. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, I think that's everything. I'll put some links in the description, obviously. Support me however you can. I like it a lot. Yeah, I would be very appreciative. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.